going to read a few verses there. Um, New King James reading, Acts 28, verse 7. And Acts 28, 7. I may go on to 10. I might just stop at verse 9. In that region, there was an estate of the leading city citizen of the island whose name was Publicis, who received us and entreated us um, courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publicis lay sick of a fever of desertary. Paul went and laid and went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. I'll stop there. I want to talk for a few moments and about healing hands, healing hands, healing hands, healing hands. Um, it's strange in the opening of the context of scripture to see that it's Paul who was Saul. He's being used by God to bring about healing with his hands. So he went from killing Christian hands to healing hands. Encourages me more that, to let you know that it doesn't matter what you used to do. Amen. God can still use you now. Amen. Same hands, same body, but different manifestation. From killing hands to healing hands. That's what God did. So you, God can use anyone in an extraordinary way if you just yield your hands to him. Now, you fill in the blank from to healing hands. From, go ahead, speak it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fill it in in your mind. I used to be something, but now I'm doing this. I used to be doing that, but now I'm doing this. Thank God for the transformation that took place in your life and in my life. The old saints would say the things you used to do, I don't do anymore. That's what the old saints would say. Dr. Luke here is writing and he's speaking to us about the miracles of God and God's grace that worked through Paul. Luke wrote the book of, of Acts. He wrote this particular book. Some commentators believe that it was not Paul's prayer that healed um, Publius's father. It was Dr. Luke who had the medicine and he came and he healed him. But that's another theory. I believe the scriptures that Paul went in, laid his hands on him, and he was healed. The story opens up tracking off of Paul and his companions coming through a storm. It's the 27th chapter, the ending of the 27th chapter. I like Psalms 107 in verse 29 and 30 particularly. It says, God, he calms the storms so that the waves are still. God does this, Psalms 107, verse 29, 30. Verse 30 says, then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven or region. He comes the storm, but he uses the storm to get you to where he wants you to go. Then he comes and calms the storm and watch the text in Psalms 107. And he takes you to the desired haven. God uses storms to get us to our desired, our required place. In some strange way, Paul needed to be on this island of Miletus. And God was working through him to get him to his destination. But yet, Paul knew that he was not going to stay on this island but his hands were going to be used to heal. In Acts 27 and verse 24, God had given Paul a word of encouragement in the middle of the storm. And the word of encouragement was to not be afraid, but you must be brought before Caesar. The storm was not the final destiny of Paul's life. The storm that you might be in right now is not the final destiny of your life. Because God, thank you, Sister Tracy, Evangelist Tracy, God is a storm watcher. And he creates the storms, then he quiets the storms, Psalms 107, and they are glad. So there are some storms that you go through, 
that you think are never going to end. And the more they seem like they're not going to end, the more intense they become. I think one place in the Bible, it calls it a loroclodum. It's an intense, overwhelming storm. But Paul got this encouraging words in Acts 27 and 24 that you're going to stand before Caesar. Storm was not your final destination of your life, but he encourages, Paul did, those that were with him to take heart and believe that God is going to do what he said. An angel stood by Paul that night and told him, believe what I tell you, that God is with you. It takes sometimes a messenger from God to encourage you to know that I'm going to bring you out of this storm. So the survivors of the shipwreck, the storm that tore up the boat, brings them to the island of Malata. Malata means honey. Track the story with me. I'm on an island called Honey, but there's snakes. Hmm. The narrative here is greeted, they're greeted with kindness from the barbarians or those that did not speak their language. They greet Paul and his companions and they begin to speak with them and treat them kindly. I'm on the island now, you're in Acts 28. Paul and his companions are looking to them for comfort and they go about picking up sticks to bring to the fire. Paul here, keep in mind, prisoner, he's in chains, but he's going around picking up sticks. It must have been very difficult for him to have chains on and trying to pick up sticks. Text shows, or history shows that Paul was not a very big man, not a very strong man, but here he was doing his job to warm the fire, trying to do something good. Difficult as it was, he was gathering sticks. It was dark, late at night. Cool and cold, they were wet. Strange when you're trying to do good and trying to bring things to the fire to make things better. Somehow you pick up a venomous viper. <laughs> Preach to yourself, boy. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking to pick up snakes. If anything, I'm running from them. However, God's grace was yet working with Paul because he was on assignment. The islanders in Acts 28 verse 4 saw the venomous viper on Paul's hand. And supposing Paul was a murderer, you survived the sea, but you're not going to survive this snake. I come to tell somebody, the God that was over the sea is also the God that's over snakes. Snakes. Ah, oh, snakes. God was still in control and guiding Paul because Acts 27 said he had to get to Caesar, to Rome. The islanders were waiting after they see the, seen the snake bite Paul, waiting for him to fall down and die. Isn't it strange that you outlive what other people died from? We know they bit you. We saw it on you. And you survived it. Without any medicine, you survived it. Bitten, but not broken. Surviving snake bites is not an easy thing. I need five people to say, ouch. A snake can sting you without touching you because the words can come out that will hurt you harder than physical abuse. But text says he shook the snake, shook the stake off, snake, snake off into the fire, indicating Satan going into the lake of fire. And any snake that's bothering you now, just take it off into the fire. Wow, I saw financial snakes jumping off people. <laughs> I saw depression snakes jumping off people. Yeah, snakes shake it off. With clear distinction that Paul understood he was on assignment. So the barbarians were waiting for Paul to fall down and die, but he did not. 
Paul realized and the Holy Spirit had already declared to him that he was going to be a survivor in Acts 27, 24 to go to Rome. In Romans, the first chapter, verse 11 and 12, Paul said, I long to see you. Rome, there is. There's Christians that were in Rome that I might impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be encouraged. When you're moving to a place of ministry to encourage and to strengthen someone else, there's always going to be snakes. There's going to be a storm. But you have to get through those things and get to your destiny. Romans 1, 11, verse 12. That, it, that is that I may be encouraged with you by the mutual faith brought of you, both for you and me. I want to get to Rome to encourage somebody. I got to get to my place of destiny and destination. God was building Paul's testimony as he builds ours through snakes and storms and doubters waiting for you to swell up and die. But God still keeps you alive. Sometimes what bites you may make you better and not bitter. If it doesn't kill you, it will make you stronger. Now, the text, Acts 28, verse 7. Paul is still 150 miles from Rome. He lands in a region where there were estates. Now, these were not just normal houses. It's a very rich and lucrative area. I've seen a few estates. I'm talking about big houses. The leading, leading citizen of the land was publicist. He owned a lot of these estates. And they received Paul, in, Paul and his companions in for three days to encourage them. I got to get to Rome. I can only imagine Paul's mind thinking that, okay, the storm was horrible. The boat is tore up. I told these people that God will do what he said. I shook off a snake into the fire. But now I am, I'm here in this wonderful estate for three days and want to know when I'm going to get out of this holding pattern. But here I am waiting. Everything seemed like it's okay. God has a way of holding you up at a prophetic stop sign to do what he needs to do in the holding pattern. The Lord told Paul, I want you to be encouraged. You are my chosen vessels, Acts 9, 15 and 16. You are my chosen vessels. I'm going to bring you before kings, your children of Israel, but I will show you also, Acts 9, 15, 16. I'm also going to show you how many things you must suffer for my name. So don't forget, Paul, it's going to be a suffering way and a glorious way. Healing hands. Paul now waiting there in Publicist's home, patiently waiting for the next move of God. In Acts 28, verse 8, and it happened. That the father of Publicist lay sick of a fever, a desertary. He had a stomach problem, and he could not get it fixed, aching, eating, but was in pain. The Bible says Paul went in and he prayed. There's victory in prayer. Prayer can change what nothing else can change. If you're not going to pray for me, don't pray against me. After Paul prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. And that's the message. Prayer brought intercessory power to lay his hands on this sick man and he healed him. Living in an estate but could not have this disease from his stomach removed. Money was not a problem. He needed to be healed. The Bible says, if we run out again of Acts and go to 1 Corinthians 12, 7 and 9, he says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given unto everyone to profit with all. Acts, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, and 8, 7 through 9. 
is given to all. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom and to another the word of knowledge and by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another the gift of healings by the same spirit. Everyone has a measure of these gifts, but everyone does not have the same power within working within these gifts. We all can lay hands, but there are people with the gift of laying on hands. And there comes a time where you have to have someone lay hands on you to pray over you, to break that thing off of you. Paul had that gift. God's power was manifested in Paul's belief that God's hand was there with him. Even though this father of publicists was sick, he knew that God's hand is working. And I'm here for a purpose and a reason. In Mark 16, verse 16 through 18, God's power was now being manifested through Paul's belief. Jesus said the believer will be saved. They will drive out demons. I'm reading it from the NIV, Acts, Mark, I'm sorry, 16. They will speak with new tongues or with heavenly language. They will pick up snakes with their hands and they will not hurt them. What authority, Moses, down there in Pharaoh's house? You throw your rod, the magicians throw their rods, and your snake eat up the magician's snake. And then the Lord tells you, Moses, take the snake by the tail. He picks it back up, stretches it out, it becomes a rod again. This is not magic, this is the power of God working through snakes. snakes. So the snake that's been trying to bite you God says this morning, take that thing by the tail and pick it up. I don't want to be bothered. If you don't control it, it's going to control you. Some of y'all ain't moving your hands yet. If you don't take over it, it's going to take over you. A spirit of a snake could enter your home and start running everything. The Bible says, I'm going to give you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions. So if you don't take control of your emotions, of your spirit, of your mind, you're going to be depressed all your life. Get married, still ain't going to be happy. Get money, still ain't going to be happy. Live in a state, still going to be miserable. You got to control your space all around you. Okay. It doesn't feel good to be snake bitten. But nothing makes a snake more angrier to know that you can't hurt me. I have been designed for snake bites. I don't look for them, but I've been designed for snake bites. Don't be tripping and be surprised. Oh, they bit me. They were supposed to bite you. <laughs> you knew when you picked me up, I was a. But somehow, <laughs> you decided to try to help me. If you go back, I hear you, come on, bring your mind back. You know, you know when you pick that person up, you know when they came over, this ain't nothing but a, I should have just left you where I found you. But because you want to help people, you pick up. So if you got to pick the snake up, control it. Mark 16, 16, Mark 16. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. I'm reading from the NIV of this particular text. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will recover, they'll get well. Let me drop through here before I finish. Um, drinking deadly poison could be in fentanyl, I'm sorry, could be in Advil. <laughs> Sometimes you, you, you take things and thinking that it's going to do one thing and you get side effects. Not understanding what all the side effects is going to do, but it's deadly. Um, quick testimony and I'll talk about deadly things. Uh, some years ago, my, my doctor, Dr. Coker, he's retired now, and I was having heart problems and having all this fluttering and fluttering and fluttering. I said, man, it's just church. 
<laughs> he said, I'm going to set you to a, a, a heart, um, was it heart cath. Heart, what is it? Cardiologist. God, oh, come on, doctor. <laughs> he said, we want to do a, a, a scan on your heart. Uh, what is that thing called? Good God, this church is smart. <laughs> So I went there for and they, they run this thing up, uh, they went this thing up my, my, my arm somewhere. They went all this little wire and went all the way up and put it on and looked at the microphone and looked at, my, looked at my heart. And they said, they said, your heart looks good. Everything's fine. They said, you, you're, he said, but I want you to take this little medicine. I said, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> hold on. Big mama said, no, I'm going to go to prayer. No. So they gave me this, this medicine. It was a pill, it was almost as long as a pin drop. The more I took it, the more my chest was, I said, wait a minute. I said, I got to, I got to get off this. I got to get, this is not helping me at all. It's maybe, it's hurting me. So I was winged off of it with some better uh, vitamins, just plain vitamins. And it helped me a whole lot because I was about to lose my whole self thinking what's going on. So the deadly thing was trying to make it more worse for me. I didn't need that. I needed hands. And that thing removed. So I got better and I'm doing better even, even now. So drinking deadly things, don't let the enemy play with your mind that it's going to take you out. You got to get to your assignment. And it's not over yet until God says so. Acts, Mark 16. You're going to lay hands on the sick people. And they shall recover. NIV say they will get well. I recover. Don't get scared. <laughs> I want you to recover. Because you're not like you used to be. You're not moving like you used to move. You're, you're, you're on your way, but you're not moving fast enough. I want you to recover and, and be totally healed. Paul laid his hands on Publius's father, and he got well. Verse 10, I'll jump to that and I'll come back and finish on verse 9. And they turned around and blessed Paul and his companions and gave them everything they needed to get to the next destination. So they, they blessed them. But going forward in this context, after the man was healed, because Paul laid his hands on him, the disease was worse, but there's a worse disease. It's deeper, it's deeper than the bodily disease. It's the sting of conscience. A small, sharp, inner voice acting as a guide in the wrong direction. I need to be healed because I keep going in the wrong directions. I see all the signs and they make them real big, wrong way. <laughs> but I just keep going in the wrong direction. Every time I think I'm going in the right direction, my conscience tell me, turn and go that way. What a disease. I can't do right wrong every time I try to do right Paul says the wrong that I do I've gone to therapy I've gone to checkup I've taken medicine but my medicine don't break this wrong off of me wrong relationship shall we preach this morning <laughs> wrong people around me wrong eating habits I just keep eating it it's 1130 at night. I'm going to get me a Burger King. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Just wrong. I keep doing the same wrong thing. I come in church. Wrong seat. They ain't got no joy over here. I got to get around somebody that's got some joy. I didn't come to church to sit in a funeral home. I come to sit around somebody that's happy about Jesus. Oh, God. Wrong. You see all the signs. Ladies, ladies, you see it wrong coming at y'all. Here it come, here it come. I can see it before it come out of his mouth. Hey, don't even speak to me. Wrong. Conscience, disease. Another disease is the deadness of heart. Deadness of heart. You're just so callous because life has made you hard. Nothing can penetrate your heart. I'm not open to or for anyone. But God can raise the spiritual dead. 
he can take out Ezekiel 11, the stony heart, and put in a heart of flesh. If you allow your heart to be sensitive to the Lord, you can come in that covenant relationship with him. I'm not sure why it is so, but most of the women went back to the tomb where Jesus was. The rest of the guys went back fishing. They told him they was going to go fishing. But your heart must be open to God and allow him in because that's the first beginning of loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. Second to the last one is the blindness of divine truth, a disease. I'm just an appetite for false teaching. I just run for every podcast of negativity I can find. I'm looking for somebody to help me understand that they deny Jesus Christ. So I'm just chasing after this divine. I just have a hardness against divine truth. Truth can slap me right on my head and say it's a lie. Just hardness against divine truth. Won't believe it no matter if your mama told you you won't believe the truth. But Jesus says you're going to know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Matter of fact, I am the way the truth and the life not one of the ways i am the way if you're looking for the way you got to come by jesus not only am i the way i am the door you can't get in but by me i don't believe all that jesus stuff then stay outside we gonna come on in this boat with jesus and ride it on out i am also the light and the life you can't get to the father but by me. But I don't, I don't want all that Jesus loud stuff. You just said that in the club. Turn it up. Turn it up. Yeah, yeah. Now you get in church, it's too loud. They have to bring it down some. Girl, if you seen the way I was hanging over hell, you said, turn it up loud and God, you saved him. Blindness to divine truth. The last one of the disease, I did pretty good, girl. Paralyze of energy to serve God. That's a disease. You were born to be a witness, created to serve. Now they come into the house of the Lord and I'm paralyzed with a disease to not serve the Lord. When every day of my life should be in service for the Lord. I take advantage of it like I'm all that. And he needs to serve me and not me serve him. And some of you play it so low, I ain't doing nothing for that man up there. Please, I didn't save you. <laughs> it's the man up there you need to serve for. Well, I don't know my gift. Baby, listen, it's not too far for what you do every day. Some of you talk to people for hours on the phone, but you won't call and witness to nobody. Just paralyze to the energy of serving God. Use your energy for everything else but serving God. When it comes to serving the Lord, there are a litany of excuses of why I can't do this. Come here, let me lay my hands on you and break that thing off of you because you could be the one that can transform the kingdom into something great. Disease of holding back from God and not giving to him. Stingy, 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 stingy. Just won't give up anything for the kingdom's sake. Come here and let me break that thing off of you. When you find someone that can remove that from you, you can go on to your destiny. Paul knew that he was called to heal and his hands were healing hands. And God was doing the supernatural through him. And he also is going to do it through us. God restored Publicist's father and brought him back to healness. Following the needs that they, follow needs, they blessed Paul, them, I said that, and sent them on their way. Working through Paul's life with signs and wonders. Though bound in chains, he was still faithful to God. If Paul could serve God, with chains on his hands. What's wrong? Come here. Let me lay hands on you. Because you need to be broken free. With the freedom that you have. And you still hold yourself bound. You come to church. You don't sing none of the songs. 
You don't even hum the song. You won't clap your hands. You won't tear into your neighbor. I didn't ask you that at all this morning. You just come and sit down. It's like, do you realize it's by the grace of God. You made it through the storm. You survived the snake bite. You should stand up in a blue chair and wave pom-poms and thank God for delivering you out of all he delivered you from. When you expect great things from God, you attempt great things for God. Healing hands. Hold your hands out in front of you, please. Say, these hands right here have survived some things. And I know there's a grace on my life to break somebody free in the name of Jesus. I know there's oil in these hands because I have the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to start this morning. I ain't turning to my neighbor. I'm going to lay these hands on me and break me free from my stubborn self. If you're driving, don't try this. But if you're at home, put your hands together and give God some shout and praise. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> he got his. Anybody else want to be broken free? Just want to just come out of from whatever you're struggling through? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I think it's here. I'm getting my financial release, my deliverance, my house is shifting. Everything is moving up in my life because God has allowed me to have a breakthrough moment. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out. You are being delivered. You are being set free. Today, I'll be right back. Today is the day of your release. I believe God for the impossible. If you're online, put your hands on the TV and catch my head. In the name of Jesus, my money is blessed. My house is blessed. My children are blessed. Everything in my life is blessed, 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 In the name of Jesus, I believe the God of the Bible. I believe the God of the Bible. By his stripes, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I am healed, 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 recover, 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 recover. Recover! Come on. Hi. Put your hand. 
Y'all tired? Stand back up for a moment. All right. Put your hands. Stand back up, please. Put your hands on your stomach. This is coming to somebody. It may not be everybody, but it's coming to somebody. Say, my system is working right again. By the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for what I ate didn't kill me. In the name of Jesus, what bit me, oh my God, didn't stop me. You didn't say that with some authority. Say, what bit me didn't stop me. I must finish my assignment in the name of Jesus. I am healed, 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 healed. Be healed. This is my destiny. This is my assignment. I want to lay hands and see you recover. I need 50 people to give a God that didn't kill me, pray. should have wiped you out. It should have took you under. But thank God. Oh. Oh. Get something in your hand and say control it. Control it. Control it. You got the authority in the name of Jesus. I'm walking in authority, living life without apology. Yes! Woo. Oh, I see you. 